I'm Chef Whitney Aronoff, and I wanted to show you guys today what's in my chef bag. So I wanted to show you guys what I actually take with me when I go to my client's home to create their custom meal prep. My hopes is this demystifies what a chef carries with them, what you need at home, the quality that you need, you know, choosing pieces to add into your kitchen that can really help support you in creating healthy, delicious meals that you know are a little more elevated. So I'm gonna open up my chef's bag. I'm gonna show you guys what I actually use every day for my clients, but also for myself. Um, as they say, if you don't you know, feed yourself first, if you don't nourish yourself first, then you can't serve others. So everything that you guys are gonna see that I use, I also use at home. So I actually buy a lot of doubles. So that way I can keep things in the kitchen at home and then I can keep my chef bag in the car and you know immediately pull that out and go into my client's homes. So I do always carry two bags with me. This is my knife bag with some tools, and then I carry another bag with me that has my mandolin, it has my clipboard, my recipe book, um, and any additional items that I may be bringing to my client's home. So my special spice blends. Um, and additional spices that I like to carry with me just in case you know my clients run low or are out or you know I decide to add something special in so those are some of the extra things that I carry um, with me when I serve and cook for my clients but let's open this up I'll show you guys exactly what I use you might see a few things that you haven't seen before you might wonder what is that but we're going to show it all to you guys today, or at least try to. So I'm just going to pull a few things out to help break it down for you. Lots of options. I know it just keeps going. Right? Ooh. This. Lots of interesting essentials. And I think we can wrap that up. I think, oops, Uno Moss will pull that out just in case. And I think that's good. All right, so these are going to be the tools that I want to show you guys today. We'll get this out of the way. All right, number one, obviously when you are preparing anything, you want to have a cutting board out. So this is essential. I use this to keep the cutting board in place. So a lot of people's cutting boards will slip and slide on their counter, and that's dangerous when you're working with a knife, especially if you're mincing, chopping, um, really working in general. You want to work with a with a surface that is you know solid that you can really count on staying still. So this you can get at any craft store. Um, I cut it the size of a full cutting board and then when I work, um, you know, everyone's home has different size cutting boards and I obviously prefer wood cutting boards. Uh, if I'm working with a smaller cutting board, I just fold it in half and it stays right here. Then if I'm working with a larger cutting board, you know, I open it up and put it right on board. So um, it's super easy to wash in the sink. Obviously it's turned pink because I worked with a red plastic cutting board that dyed it. Um, but it's just fine. You'll have it for many, many, many years. Definitely worth going to the craft store, picking up a roll. I use this all the time. Next thing I show you guys will be my knives, all right? So I work with Mercer knives. Um, and part of why I do that is because it has this rubber grip on the handle. So because I'm cooking in the kitchen for five, six, seven hours, sometimes longer than that, it's nice to have something that's really comfortable on the hands. If you talk to any chefs, um, they do develop calluses on their hands. Uh, we obviously tend to grip knives a little harder than maybe we should all the time, just like sometimes we grip the wheel of a car harder than we should. So I do use Mercer knives. You guys can purchase Mercer knives on their website. They're really great. They're really reasonably priced. Um, I carry two knives with me. So I carry a French knife. You know it's a French, a French knife because it is, has a sharp tip on the end. And then I carry with me a Japanese knife. Again, you know it's Japanese knife because it is straight on the end. 
And then I went ahead and engraved my knights with my initials. So that way I never get it, you know, misplaced at anybody's home. Um, sometimes I do dinner parties and I have a larger team with me. And so they'll need to use my knives to prepare something. And, um, or maybe I have dishwashers supporting me and making sure that it doesn't go back into somebody's drawer in their home. It's, it's nice to have your initials on, on your knife. Um, just also nice to personalize things, you know? Maybe it's, it's kind of that Southern way. Um, and then this is a knife everybody should have. Uh, this is the greatest bread knife in the world. I love this knife. It's a serrated knife. Um, so serrated knives you can never sharpen. So uh, they will get dull someday and you'll just have to let it go and, and move on to a new one, but they stay sharp for a really long time. And I obviously use this for more than just bread because if you know me and my cooking style, I don't do much bread. So this is really great for slicing anything. Um, tomatoes, anything that's soft um, and delicate, this is really great for. So I love my serrated knife. I do use it all the time. And then this is a knife sharpener. So it's, it's like a tuning fork. So it's not gonna sharpen your knife that much, but it's gonna give it a little more if you need a little extra support because you're noticing your knife is getting dull. Um, so I'll give you an example of how you do it. So you can hold it this way, you can hold it this way. There's lots of ways that you can hold it, but you're just giving your knife a nice little sharp. It's just giving your knife a little bit. But if you really need your knife sharp, um, either you have to get a block, um, soak the block and block it yourself, or you need to take your knife to a specialty place to get it sharpened. Um, a lot of farmers markets have sharp uh, knife sharpeners. A lot of chef stores have knife, uh, knife sharpeners. Um, William Sonoma has knife sharpeners. So find a place that you like and take it there consistently. So that, I would say those are my mainstays. On top of this, um, these are kitchen scissors. Um, and again, I use them for everything. So I'm the type of per person when I open a package, whether it be a brown rice, cassava flour, I like to use my knife so it has a clean cut so I can reuse it over and over again and it's easy to get into. Um, a lot of herbs, I cut the herbs, so chives. You'll usually cut the chives. Um, sometimes you wanna cut basil using this. Um, when I open bags, let's say I had my chicken thighs vacuum sealed or my filet mignon vacuum sealed. Uh, it's a lot easier to slice into that meat, especially like lamb chops are usually vacuum sealed. Um, and the best part of this is they easily detach so you can clean them really well. And they're not gonna get dull like regular scissors um, get dull if you use them in the kitchen. These aren't. And they're not gonna get weird and sticky because they're so easy to clean. So I really suggest a pair of quality kitchen scissors. Um, this is one of the best investments that you can, can, can add to your kitchen. And they're only $15. So again, these are Mercer, $15, totally worth it. Um, so these are other things that I always keep with me. Um, obviously a peeler. So potatoes, carrots, cucumbers, um, you name it, I use this peeler. Um, I prefer the wide peeler. You're going to get a lot more done than if you use that long, narrow one, which I have as well because that's what I grew up using on carrots. But this is a lot more efficient. Um, this one's Open Table from William Sonoma, but you can find tons out there. They stay sharp for many, many years. Uh, ice cream scooper. I know, you're like, why do you need an ice cream scooper? Well, I do make a lot of homemade ice cream. But I use these for making meatballs so I can get like a consistent shape. I use this when I want to make any, um, any like nut ball or granola bar or any, you know, healthy raw dessert treat. And I want, again, to create consistent shapes. I'm great for making cookies. Anytime that you want to roll anything into a ball or you need to smash anything or basically anytime you want to keep a consistent size, this is really great. Um, it's nice to buy larger ones as well. So if you're doing a dinner party and you wanna make sure everyone gets the same amount of mashed potatoes, you can use an ice cream scooper and then that way, scoop it onto the plate and then kind of shape it. 
that will allow everyone to get the same serving size. So um, really invest in getting some ice cream scoopers and you definitely want to get the kind with this handle that helps you scoop it out. It's really nice. Um, I make a lot of mashed potatoes. Obviously I'm a health supportive chef. So when I make my mashed potatoes, I'm using ghee or I'm using organic butter or raw butter. Um, you know, I'm using raw milk. Um, I'm using the best ingredients I can to make these mashed potatoes as healthy as possible. And so I just needed a little masher because it's hard to make mashed potatoes with a fork. I feel like I don't get as smooth of a consistency. And obviously not all my clients have a ricer or a food mill, which are also great pieces of equipment to make great mashed potatoes, but they're much bigger pieces that are harder for me to carry. You really have to have it at home. So I got this little masher. Again, it's by Open Table at Williams Sonoma. I just wanted something that was really easy to take with me. Um, I actually prefer um, mashers with a much longer handle. It's much easier to work with um, and a wider base. But this is nice for just, you know, keeping in, in my chef's kit, kit and having when you need it. So I do suggest this. Um, when it comes to measuring tools, I absolutely prefer stainless steel simple round, really easy. Um, I don't like any of those um, more creative shapes or the ones that are made out of clay. I, I find that when it comes to measuring out a tablespoon or a teaspoon, you really need something that can easily go into a dish. You can even off the top, you know it's gonna be consistent every time. I actually carry two of these in my chef's bag um, because sometimes they get dirty or you end up putting garlic or ginger on it and you need to grab for, you know, a tablespoon again to do a completely different spice and the other one's dirty and may continue to carry that taste or scent. So I keep two sets with me. They're super helpful. They're also great if you're making meatballs or something that you need to measure out the exact amount. So again, I, I really suggest getting just kind of the classic basic stainless steel um, measuring tools. Again, you can get these at Chef's Toys super inexpensive, they'll last forever. I do the same with the measuring cups. I take this with me everywhere because you never know. Someone may have um, their own measuring cups, they may have broken. I keep two sets of these with me, all different sizes, from one cup, a half a cup, a quarter cup, to a third cup. Um, these little tools I absolutely love for making sure that I get everything out of a bowl or out of a Cuisinart or out of a Vitamix. Um, there's two different styles. Um, I even use some smaller ones, but these are really great tools. I actually always carry two microplanes. So I use these a lot for obviously lemon zest, lime zest, and really finely grated Parmesan, even orange zest. Um, this particular one allows you to do beautiful peels as well. And then I have uh, a traditional microplane that's long and thin as well. I always like to carry two, like I said, so if anybody on my team needs to use it during a dinner party, we're good to go. Um, and then a juicer. So sometimes, you know, when I'm at a home that doesn't actually have an electric juicer, sometimes you can only get so much out by hand. So I like to have a little juicer with me for lemon and lime juice. Um, to be honest, I need to buy a new one. The ones that have the metal piece inside allows you to get a lot more juice out. So I don't recommend this model. I recommend the model that has the extra piece inside to get more juice out. Um, but I do carry one with me all the time because it's still better than what I get when I just try to squeeze with a fork. This, ooh, this little tool um, is actually an apple core. So sometimes I do do beautiful baked apples or I want an apple core or core an apple for, um, because I'm making apple pie or an apple cobbler. Um, you, it's great for pears too, if you're gonna poach pears. I don't use it all the time, but sometimes it's like one of those weird tools that you do need. So I keep it in there because you never know. And then last but not least, um, I keep a little kit with band-aids because you never, ever, ever know. So I keep some band-aids here. I keep some band-aids in the outer pocket of my knife kit because, you know, you just, you just want to be prepared. You know, even the most talented chefs can occasionally cut themselves. 
And then I just remember there's one more tool that you guys might be um, surprised to learn that I carry with me. And that is a little ruler. So again, you can get this at, you know, at any office store or craft store. This is a six inch ruler. It fits perfectly in my chef's jacket. Whenever I'm working, I keep this in the side of my chef's jacket, a pen and often a Sharpie as well. And this will allow me to get consistent cuts when I really need to be mindful. So maybe I'm match sticking carrots. Um, again, maybe I'm doing appetizers. There is always a time where I wanna make sure I create consistent pieces. And so this is really nice to use. I prefer the clear ones versus, you know, a wood ruler because sometimes you want to be able to see through it depending on what you're putting it on top of, even if you're using it for parchment paper. So I do suggest this as well. But I would say that's, that's the basics of the knife kit. And then of course you guys know I'm really into my mandolin. I don't go anywhere without my mandolin. I have one I keep in the car and I have one I keep in my kitchen. I use it all the time. This is the mandolin by, it's like XO, XO, or OXO. Um, it has multiple different sizes and functions, um, and it's my be all end all. I use it all the time. Um, this is the most steady of all the mandolins I've seen out there. Um, it's the safest of all the mandolins. I definitely suggest this one over a Japanese mandolin, or, um, you know, You'll find with some mandolins that you adjust the blade with a little circular piece underneath the blade and there's no directions, meaning it doesn't tell you this is going to be a thin cut, this is going to be a thick cut, versus this one you just control up here and it tells you a fourth of an inch, a third of an inch, a half an inch and it's easier to see how much you're opening it up and how much you're closing it. So, you know, I've tried and used a lot of mandolins, working in lots of different restaurant kitchens at culinary school. Uh, this is really my favorite, favorite one. So um, I highly suggest investing in a mandolin because when you get bored of vegetables in your salad, all you gotta do is change the way you cut it and it's gonna taste completely different. It's so easy to, to have new experiences with the same old, same old food. And that's really what's separating your meals from the meals that you have when you're at a restaurant. You know, when you order that, that starter salad and it comes out and it is so good and so fresh and so simple, and you're thinking, if I could only make this at home every day, I'd be so healthy, I'd be so skinny, my life would be better, why can't I just recreate this at home? And they're using little tools that you guys have seen today to make those salads and those meals with really simple ingredients taste so good. It's just a little bit of technique. So this, this is the gist of it. I just wanted to kind of demystify what I use every day. Um, I hope this is helpful. If you guys have any questions of the products that I showed you guys today, um, if you guys are mulling over different equipment for your kitchen, uh, please, you know, leave a comment. Let me know. I'd love to get back with you. I just want to empower you guys to be confident to cook in your own kitchen at home and, you know, be able to make delicious meals so you really feel feel nerve, nourished and, you know, you don't look for, you know, you know restaurants or other places to, to try to fill that void. You can do it at home. So that's all. Cheers.